All right, guys, so as you can see now, I'm a second story right up on top of the apex of the roof here. Um, the homeowners got scaffolding in because they want this chimney removed anyway. Um, the house here uh, has a little boy in it who's terrified of bees and allergic as well. Um, so they, they've obviously been on to the homeowner of this one. Um, now, they had been thinking about getting rid of the chimney. Um, and this is just the ideal time for them to do it. So they've had scaffolding put in place, which is pretty good considering. The good thing is that sort of feral thing there was on top, which meant the scaffolders didn't have to worry about the bees. I've removed it now, so they're out and about. But um, normally getting a scaffolder to, to even come around and work around bees is hard work these days. So um, the battle plan is we are going to remove some of that comb in there and then we're going to start taking this chimney down only to the level that we need and then that's up to the homeowner then to finish taking it down and what have you um, we'll stack the bricks on the side somewhere out of the way um, and uh, but it, it'll, it will be a bit of a mess when it's finished but like I said the homeowner's going to come and uh, uh, he's got a builder coming in who is going to finish taking the chimney down to the roof level and putting new tiles on the roof um, because this is a, a, an obsolete chimney, it's not being used. So, without any sort of further ado, we know the queen's in there and there must be eggs in there because there are bees carrying in pollen, okay, as you can see there, and there's a lot of heat coming out of there. So, um, I don't know how far down it goes. This comb at the top isn't being used, it's very, very old. Look how black it is. So, um, we need to uh, get down into that. So, I'm going to pull some comb first and then we're going to have a look where, where we're at and then we're going to have to move some of this and I will come back to you periodically guys. Okay so as you can see now I have taken down most of the chimney. Now apart from this big huge chunk here that was still up. I took a lot of this out by uh, uh, that small little hammer and bolster there, but um, I was struggling, so I went and borrowed this little jackhammer off my brother, and it loosened that up in one piece, so I was able to take that away. Now, we've taken away two sections of this, which was full of old black comb, as you can see this piece there and what have you. At the moment, we are down to this, so... Um, I'll hoover some of them off. I'm going to take some more down. I'm nearly down to the roof. As you can see, we're down to the floor that they've put in level. So we've come down quite a way. Um, so it's going to make it very easy for the builder because all he's going to have to do is take a couple more courses out and, and put some tiles in. And job done for him. But um, I've got to continue now and finish jackhammering this apart and then lift out this other concrete liner here. And hopefully... They won't be going down too much further because I don't want to have to go into the roof itself. Right guys, so I'm down to roof level now. I'm not going any further, which is just as well though. But if you see right down in there, okay, this is one long piece. It's about two feet long. In fact, there's two pieces there. I'm hoping I can just pull them out and that will be the end of it. Um, and then the homeowner's got to get a builder up here then to get rid of all this rubbish and finish taking this down below the roof and put in roof tiles. Um, for the builder, it's made the job much, much easier. Um, it wasn't easy for me, I can tell you. So my next step now is to get this big piece out. We've already got a bucket full of um, comb and stuff there. Um, there is some comb with some eggs on which I'm going to cut into a frame which will help them stay where they're going to be and it's a comb of pollen in there as well so we'll uh, we'll keep that but I just got to get these two pieces out and if you notice there then a little moth just flew out of there so in here is probably some wax moth larvae um, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that as well anyway um, get it done and we'll have a look at the end well guys, I don't know if we can make this out, but that's it. It's completely clear now, it goes right down. There are a few stragglers around. There's not gonna be a lot I can do about those. These are ones that are coming in now from foraging and stuff. They'll they'll settle over the next few days, but because the queen is gone, 
I've got her in the box. I actually saw her uh, in a load. I couldn't grab hold of her. She was too far, but uh, I did suck it up. So um, I've just got a few now to sort out. Excuse the camera getting all uh, sort of weird here. Um, I've got honey all over the lens, and that's the joys, as, as I explained to some of you. Look, stay on me. Um, anyway, I will show you what's what now when I get back down off the roof. They're in here now. I'm just going to take them up to the apiary and uh, and then we're going to get them settled in on a new hive. Right guys, as you can see here, this is the only piece of comb that had brood in it, um, in that chimney, okay? So it looks a mess like this, but what it will do is it will bring some more population to the hive firstly, but also it'll actually stop them from absconding. And also to stop that, we've got a bit of queen excluder across the entrance. Well, so what that means is that the workers can leave, but the Queen can't. So we're going to sit this right in the center of the um, of the hive. Close it up nice and tight. One more frame in there. Great. I'm going to use this old chrome board and for now. I've forgotten a little eek that we need. Now this is a feeder and we're going to feed them some syrup which is two to one sugar. So we've got two kilos of sugar to a litre of water in here. And we need to just dribble a little bit down the hole so they know it's up here. We need to move that, it's not quite in line. There we are. There we are. So they know how it's up here. That's good. I 
and that's hemp fed. Like I said, I've forgotten to eat, I'll bring it up later on, which will just, is a little board, it'll come around you just to lift it above, height, above that height. But for now, I'm just going to place the roof on. Like that. So, until I come up later on now and put a neat on there, um, that'll just stay as it is. Now, we'll give these a little while to settle down. This one here is the last swarm we collected out of the little boys' room, and that's doing well. Now, in case you're wondering where we are, I am on an organic farm, and they've got tons and tons and tons of room and crops and all sorts here and um, there's a fenced off area between this tunnel which it never gets used so I can trim this back and we can put as many hives as we like in here and there's loads of forage so we can can do that now this is the second apiary that we've set up and as you can see there's just miles upon miles of fields so it's great and over there there's some houses, so they've got gardens and stuff as well. So, this is the second apiary, new apiary out I've set up, and we are going to bring the bees from the allotment up here as well. And uh, I've just been having a check with the bee inspector, um, a, a health check on them, and they're all good, and they're okay to move. So, we'll be bringing them up here, and... Uh, and then these guys will hopefully now settle down. As you can see, they're doing orientation flights already. Um, they're better here than in that chimney, that's all I can say. Anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope this one was of interest too, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.